Hello again, and in this short video, we're going to sort of provide an introduction to operations management. This really lays a foundation on which we will build the individual concepts, project management, quality, location, inventory management, but really talk about why we're focused on operations management, what it is, and, and, and really to lay a foundation, uh, as I said, uh, for, for, for the rest of the discussions. So, as you can see here, uh, we've got a definition, systematic design, direction, and control of processes that transform inputs into services and products for internal as well as external customers. Fundamentally, what that means is getting things done. Operations management is about getting things done. It is about delivering on the strategic objectives of the organization. We have marketing and sales and, and, and these, other, these other functions. Operations management underlays all of them and, and, and establishes the processes by which we get products, products or services to customers. And it, and, it's, and, it, and it relates to defining the types of human resources you need, the numbers, when, where, and how, capital, information, materials. It is the coordination of all of the factors uh, of, of production to, to get, uh, to get the types of services and products to the types of customers we want uh, effectively. It doesn't always mean cheaply. When I was an undergrad, operations management was about doing things as cheaply as possible, but now we're seeing much more differentiation in the marketplace. Uh, and, and while operations management is about doing it efficiently, it is about doing cost effectively delivering the portfolio of attributes that that customers are looking for and and that's a subtle difference because it means that we don't want to cut corners on something that is important for customers so as i said before operations management is all about providing customers with products and services it's how we get things done so let's take a little minute and, and talk about a couple of companies. I show you this, uh, this logo, Disney, what comes to mind. For some of you, it might be Disney Plus and, and movie making and, and, and that side of the business. I'm going to pull us over, uh, if I may, to, to the theme parks. And if I say Disney theme parks, what comes to mind for me uh, is sort of the happiest place on earth. So that's kind of the message, that's the marketing message that Disney is sending out uh, to people. How do they manage their operations in a way that delivers that? Well, let's look at some examples as a, you know, they are, uh, they locate their uh, theme parks in areas where people go on vacation, where, where they're looking to have fun. They lay out their theme parks in a way to make lines go as effectively as possible. They manage lines not only uh, with layout, but also with different incentives, fast passes, those sorts of things that allow people to uh, move through and continue to have fun. Uh, they, they forecast the number of people they expect and staff uh, levels effectively to be able to deliver a positive experience so that there are, they, they don't minimize staff, they want lots of staff there so that if they see someone having a bad experience, they try to intervene and improve that experience. When I was in a Disney theme park years ago, when my kids were young, I saw another kid drop an ice cream cone immediately there was a staff member there giving them a voucher you know we were standing in front of a ride humming and hawing about whether it was worth waiting in line and a staff member came out and put fast passes into our hands so that we could ride one right away it is about managing that experience to deliver on that happiest place on earth uh, promise so operations management is all about how we deliver on that promise Look at another one, Walmart. Uh, when I say Walmart, show you that logo, what comes to mind? Uh, for me, it's everyday low pricing. You know, the Walmart 
sort of promise is we you will save money you will you will uh, buy from us cheaper than you can buy anywhere else fundamentally then they structure their uh, operations in a way that allows them to deliver that yes they have to buy well and we've all heard about them using their size to leverage uh, to leverage better deals from suppliers but they do a lot of things operationally too that supports their strategic priority of low price um, Walmart uh, holds very little inventory inventory costs you money if if you have to pay money for inventory you have to charge more for that inventory to go out uh, and so it, by minimizing inventory, by having almost no inventory in in, uh, in distribution centers and having it all out in front of the customer, they save on inventory costs. One of the ways they do that is they Walmart pioneered uh, an approach called cross docking, where supplier trucks come to one side of a loading dock with Walmart trucks on the other side, and rather than unloading supplier trucks trucks into a distribution warehouse, which then uh, gets uh, loaded onto trucks later, product comes directly off supplier trucks and put into Walmart trucks. Uh, and so you'll have several supplier trucks unloading, several supplier truck, uh, Walmart trucks loading, and, and that inventory never has to sit for any time at all and cost money in a distribution warehouse. Walmart then also clusters their stores to make delivery efficient uh, so that they can save money on delivery. Uh, they have ef efficient routes. And again, all of these operational priorities allow the, the company to deliver on their strategic priorities of, of low price. So uh, operations underlie the success of, of the company regardless of what their strategic position is in to be successful, an organization needs to meet or exceed customer expectations. It is about delivering what customers want. They have to do that at a price which will provide profit for shareholders and continued investment. And what, what I didn't want to infer earlier was that cost doesn't matter, but uh, it is cost subject to the constraint that we, were, we are delivering on what it is those customers want. And that's an important distinction. We can't cut corners in areas that are important to customers or we will not succeed with those customers. And that's about delivering value. Customers are looking for a bundle of characteristics. That total bundle provides the level of value customers deem appropriate. And that's not just sort of the physical elements or attributes of that uh, product or service. It's about the other things that come with it. It's about the atmosphere, uh, the the purchase experience. If it's about the atmosphere in a restaurant, if you're if you're eating in a restaurant, it is about the after sales service. Uh, if you have a problem, it is about all of those things, and it's the expectation of customers, uh, of you as a company that you have to deliver at, and 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 they realize customers often realize that price is an important signal of quality and 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 they're willing to pay for if you deliver on their expectations and so delivering that bundle is the operational challenge so let's look at two more two more uh, logos here again we've got starbucks and we have tim hortons I mean, in theory, they're both just places you can get a coffee, one cup, you know, you might have one preference, others might have another preference. But fundamentally, if you look at these logos, you get different impressions regardless, regardless of, your, uh, of, your, uh, of your coffee preference, you get different impressions. And those impressions are driven to a significant degree by their strategic priorities and the operational infrastructure that they develop and process that they develop to deliver on those. So uh, Tim Hortons is generally a cheaper coffee than a Starbucks coffee. You have less choice, so less inventory. Uh, you, you, they, it's really just one type of coffee. They might have two or three different kinds of sweeteners. They have milk or cream and maybe soy milk. Uh, and so there are some combinations you can have, but if you go into a Starbucks, there are different flavors, there are different roasts, there are different, uh, you know, 
we all know the joke of the you know the long list of of non-fat low soy uh, lattes that that you can get at Starbucks but again that means you people are willing to pay more because they get their name written on the, the I don't mean to be uh, cynical their name written on the cup and 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 all of that additional choice now if you look then at how a Starbucks uh, Starbucks has fewer locations uh, Tim Hortons has more locations they carry less inventory they are lower priced they make money on volume and on turns Starbucks layouts are different there is much much more room behind the counter and in fact more people behind the counter because they are customizing every single coffee to a much higher degree uh, than they will at Tim Hortons so in order to deliver on uh, the fact that people are willing to that people value Starbucks coffees higher they structure things differently they forecast differently they have different processes they have different layouts in the store all to allow them to deliver uh, on their customer promise so within that uh, there are a variety of priorities and, and I'm going to present them here as discrete and they're not always discrete. These are sort of uh, elements of a strategic priority that a company could have and and then the operational priorities that that means. So for uh, for Walmart, as an example, low cost operations becomes important because they want to deliver low price retail environment, control the use of resources, input costs, uh, really drive down uh, costs so that we can deliver a cost-effective product. On the other hand, there's also high-performance design we've, where we focus on you know, high level uh, of attributes, superior features, the fancy bells and whistles, the lower, the closer tolerances, which means less variability, so a much clearer expectation of what we can get things that last longer, durability, the level of service that comes with it, uh, access or exclusivity, and the safety associated with it. So all of those things are things that add value to a product and can become a strategy that we deliver on operationally. We manufacture or we deliver as a service operationally, at realizing that this customer values those higher and, and is willing to pay more. Now, again, these aren't necessarily always uh, completely distinct or, or in conflict. I'm just highlighting what some of those what some of those differences might be. We could talk about consistent quality uh, product or service to meet or surpass design specifications, low level of rejects or errors. So so a much more consistent product or experience. You know exactly. One of the things I would argue that Tim Hortons does incredibly well is. If you are in Buffalo or Vancouver or in Listowel, Ontario or at the Toronto airport or at a Tim Hortons in Paris, you know what you're going to get. That coffee is consistent and, and, and that's a big part of what their brand is and a big part of what the customer expectation is. And they structure things in a way to do that effectively. And uh, I remember once being told a story about a coffee company that was trying to sell coffee to McDonald's uh, when they were getting into that business. And uh, one of the, the salespeople said, well, you know, we have these grinders and these brewers and, and you smell the beautiful coffee when you walk uh, into the store and McDonald's shut off automatically because what happens is they want a consistent experience. You walk into a McDonald's, they want it to be neutral from a smell perspective. They want that experience to be the same regardless of where you walk into that store. So thinking about all of those sort of priorities becomes a touchstone uh, within which uh, you, can, uh, you, you can deliver customer value. Fast delivery times, on-time delivery, new service and product development speed all of these are competitive priorities that will influence how we structure our operation in order to deliver it time-based comp competition how can we do things quickly the degree to which we customize uh, 
you know, to get back to the Starbucks example, customization is, is what Starbucks is all about. And so they structure their processes, their staffing levels, the layout of their stores in a way that allows them to deliver on that customization promise. Volume flexibility, all, you know, can, can, can you respond to varying orders? Can you be a high volume order one day, low volume order the next day? Again, that affects how you structure. It affects how you uh, decide to carry inventory. It, it, it affects how you uh, manage your manufacturing processes. So all of these competitive priorities can be in conjunction with each other, but need to be identified based on the overall strategic priorities of the company and we get competitive priorities for operations and then we structure our operations in a way to deliver it so as we get into an introduction to operations management class we understand that this is the foundation and we use these different tools inventory project management safety location layout uh, supply chain management uh, in ways to analyze the best way to deliver on these competitive priorities. One of the things we need to recognize is that uh, most of our current business students will work in service uh, industries rather than in manufacturing industries. It's the reality of today's economy. And, and while I have used sort of words that focus to a degree on production type contexts, it's, it's, this discussion is just as relevant, if not more relevant, for the service uh, for the service sector and and i'm going to talk about that a little bit so let's first talk about service strategies or competitive strategies in service and you can have standardized services just like you can you know you know we talked about standardized uh, in the context of of tim hortons perhaps low variety homogeneous or very similar services at high volumes you know and think about the post office think about uh delivery companies think about a, a standard hotel where each room is virtually identical what we're doing is 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 delivering a consistent experience to every customer with very little variation and that has uh, with it some implications for how we do it operationally uh, on the other end, we have very much customized services where, where those services are, are very much individualized. Uh, again, let's talk, you know, the analogy might be Starbucks, uh, but, you know, health clinics, experience tours where, where you're hiring an individual guide to give you the specific experience you want. Yeah, as, as an example, my wife is a dentist. Uh, and uh, when you go into a dental clinic, you don't want the exact same service that the last person has. You want to have your specific issue or question addressed. So that's very much customized. So in that context, we structure both the dental office differently than we would a post office, uh, not just because of what services we're providing, but because we've got more variation in service. And as always, this is a continuum and, th and there are uh, spaces in the middle where assemble to order processes that produce a set of standardized services, but followed by other processes that assemble or package of standardized offering for a specific customer's need. Think cell phone packages, think cable packages, think tour packages where you can pick from a menu of items uh, and that provides you with uh, it, at least some ability to customize what you've got. I, I would argue that this sort of assembled to order is probably more similar to Starbucks than the customized services example that I used. But, but it gives you a sense of understanding what our priority is means we then have to drive decisions relative to, the, to, to, to fulfill those priorities. Let's talk for a 
minute about how goods and services differ as, as we wrap up this section. So goods are tangible. Think my uh, mechanical pencil here. It, it, I know what it is. It's consistent. Uh, if uh, I wanted three or four of them, I could buy three or four of them and each one of them would be the same. It's tangible. I know what it will do. Um, uh, production is usually separate. I don't order a mechanical pencil and then have someone come here and build it in my office. I, I order it online. I go to a store. Someone has anticipated my order or my purchase and they make it. They can inventory it. So I can go to the store and they will have several of these, I hope, and I can buy. And there's low customer interaction. Someone else is designing, uh, manufacturing, packaging the pen, the pencil and then uh, delivering it either to a warehouse where I order it online or to a retailer where I buy it. And, and I have very little interaction with, with the company that, uh, that makes it. On the other hand, services uh, are, uh, are, have, have, have different characteristics. They're intangible. You know, if there is, in, in my pencil here, if there are specific attributes that are unique that they can patent that make it cool they can protect that services you can't services are relatively easy to mimic uh, reputation matters and so again when we talked about variability or high performance design or consistency uh, earlier in the competitive priority section it becomes more important here because there's that there's potential for variability because of this heterogeneity. There's differences in between people delivering the services. There's also differences between the people who are receiving the services. So that intangibility and the heterogeneity means we almost have to be even better at operations in the service sector than we are in manufacturing. Perishability is another uh, real issue for services that, again, uh, reinforces the need to forecast and plan more effectively. Perishability means that if I don't deliver this service now, I don't have it for later. If I don't sell this pencil, I have that pencil to sell later. Go back to my example of my wife's dental office. If she has a, an appointment from 9 to 10 a.m., uh, and another appointment from 10 to 12 p.m. Uh, a.m. Uh, if someone cancels at the last minute from 9 to 12, that hour is gone, uh, and and so you can't inventory it. Whereas if I have three, rather than three hours, I have three pencils. If I don't sell a pencil in that first hour, I still have that pencil to sell later. And so perishability means uh, I have I have costs associated with having people and space available to deliver that service but if i don't use it i lose that opportunity i can't carry it forward if i have a hotel room and i don't sell it tonight i i don't have that hotel room to sell tomorrow night if i have 100 rooms tonight and 100 rooms tomorrow night if i only sell 50 tonight i don't have 150 tomorrow that's what perishability means simultaneity is the the opportunities for personal selling the the the, the ability to to customize that 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 service right at the point of contact, uh, and the issue that uh, the interaction creates customer. So so we're we're actually producing that service at the same time as the customer is consuming that service. So so again, we don't have time to do a quality inspection before we deliver it. That's happening at the same time. And so again, we have to have processes and structures and layouts that support doing that effectively more of the time because we have less opportunity for quality inspection. And, and again, uh, underlying all of that is this customer participation in the service process. The customer is there while you're producing the service. And so we need to make sure we have 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 a system that allows us to deliver it effectively uh, every time. And just uh, as as we wrap up here, to reiterate that 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 
you know, it's not absolutely good or absolutely a service. This is, is more of a continuum rather than an absolute discrete break. You know, if you're buying gasoline at a self-service gas station, that's almost 100% goods. If you're getting a haircut uh, at, a, uh, at, a, at, a hair, at a hair salon or a barbershop, that's 100% service and, and individualized. But, you know, a fast food restaurant, there's some service elements, some atmosphere elements, but that's, that's mostly food. When you go to a fine dining restaurant, you still want really good food, the goods, but you're much more interested in, in the atmosphere and the experience. So really what I'm highlighting here is that it's not either or, it's some combination of the two in most cases. So, uh, and, and finally, just to, to reiterate that, you know, uh, services are profoundly important because they're more difficult to manage and they dominate in the developed world uh, uh, economic activity today. Most of you as business students will be working in some sort of service industry, but that doesn't mean that operations management isn't still critically important to uh, being successful uh, uh, being successful as a company. And so I would argue that, that understanding operations and studying operations is probably the most important course that a business student takes. So that wraps up sort of the introduction to, to operations management. Operations management is about getting things done. We make operations management decisions in order to deliver on strategic priorities. And it's as, it's as important for products as it is for services. So that gives you a quick introduction uh, to the concept of operations management, lays the foundation, and we can move on to talking about some of the tools we use uh, in making decisions from an operations management perspective.